Hi all, I have a fascinating game to show you from ChessGames.com today between Adolf Anderson and Max Lange. e4, and we have e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5. Now knight d4, this is not thought to be that great knight d4, but it is a surprise move. And now we have knight takes d4, e takes, bishop dropping back, knight f6, e5. And black reacts with d5 here, bishop b3, and the knight refuses now to move. In fact, we see a very, very cheeky move instead. Bishop g4 just attacking the queen. But surely white can now do something really good to put both pieces uh, under attack. f3, aren't both pieces under attack? Guess what black plays here? If I give you five seconds, what would you play with black? Okay, knight e4. This looks a little bit dodgy though, surely. Now the point is, if this bishop is taken, then there's this check and that's really dangerous. For example, g3 knight takes and it's mega dangerous, this position. It's uh, losing potentially for white, for example, like this, losing spectacularly, in fact. And of course, we can't take the knight because the queen, right? Uh, so white actually castles here. And then we see a very, very interesting move indeed. D3. It's shutting down white's queen side for a moment, especially this bishop, poor bishop. And it's also opening up the counterpart on this diagonal. Now, there might be a very, very good move here available, which wasn't played. What would you play in this position? I wonder if you can find the theoretically best move. If you wanted to save white, you might want to pause the video. There is there is actually a saving move at this point in the form of Queen E1. Holding that F2 square. And it looks a bit passive to hold the F2 square. But these, these guys are, are both attacked. And if we have Bishop C5 here, this is quite good for White. White's going to be winning uh, material. Getting two pieces for the Rook is, is a great thing. And White's just better. But White, in this game, was a bit greedy. He took. We have bishop c5 check. You might not think this is a big deal, right? What's the big deal about this position? It doesn't look as though anything's particularly uh, special about it here. Surely there's nothing special about the position here. There's no tactical cheapo or anything. Or is there? Maybe we can play for a cheapo. With Queen H4, right? Because we'll be threatening Knight G3, that would be fun. On Queen H4, though, I think White can actually defend this Knight G3 with, well, maybe the best way is Queen F3. Other ways, maybe not so hot. H3, uh, there's interesting stuff for Black actually there. But Queen Queen F3 would be a good move here. And on check, just take this off. And white's up on material here. So, is it a desperate position? Given Queen H4 is not particularly hot, it's a desperate position, isn't it? Can you guess what black plays here? If I give you five seconds to pause the video. It's a beautiful conception. Knight G free check. So it's forcibly trebling white's pawns. There's only one move. And the point is, can you see? Now you might see the first move, but do you see the follow up as well? Give yourself 100 points if you can find the move for black and 500 points if you can also visualize the follow up. If 
<laughs> you might want to pause the video for that. Yeah, while this moment of disruption, this paralysis, this bishop here, queen g5 threatens queen h6 checkmate. And there's no way, easy way of closing up this diagonal. But white would seem to have a resource here against queen h6. So what would be the resource you would play here for white? Okay, rook f5, right? Now, isn't that the end of the fun for black? If he plays check, we have rook h5. Ha ha. But black has something really quite sweet in this position. Can you guess what black can play here? I'll give you five seconds. And well done if you did visualize this before. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> Just forcibly trying to wrench open the H file with the rook there instead. The queen is actually doing a wonderful job of making sure G5 is not possible. Funny enough. <laughs> so it has done something wonderful in uh, in stopping g5 as a response so this is like really forcibly wrenching open potentially this this h file now white is not done yet so clearly if he takes then hg is is mating actually because actually that's also the connection is lost to h5 this is mating but white's not done yet he plays g takes I mean, what else in this position? But now queen takes f5, renewing the threat now on h5, g4. Is white saving himself? Black to play here. A very violent move again. Rook takes h5 check there might be a good alternative here by the way in queen f2 threatening queen h4 so g3 takes threatening queen h3 this is a token check and if head stop queen pardon me if head stop queen h3 this is crushing yeah so that's it's it's a winning position for black but this is played rook takes h5 and we get another amusing restriction here that the pawns pinned and queen h4 <laughs> we have queen f3 queen h4 check queen h3 now queen e1 check and now bishop g1 check and the game ended here. But in truth, it wasn't a game that was played in a literal sense. It was of type analysis. This is a new type of chess games comedy. It was an analysis between the two. There were theoreticians. It may have been part of Adolf Anderson's training for Paul Morphy, this kind of analysis. It is a bit optimistic if there is the, the, the move Queenie one, which refutes the whole thing. Just to clarify the final position, if king h1, can you see the force chat mate here? Bishop f2, it cuts out this escape square. And after king h2, queen g1 chat mate. Yeah, it was analysis. One, a wonderful bit of analysis. I think it's aesthetically pleasing uh, in many respects. Uh, the queen g5 actually blocked the g-pawn, so that wrenching action was more, more dramatic with h5. There was no g5 in response. How the bishop and, and this h-file can be absolutely lethal after knight g3 uh, check. 
if we look at this position after knight g3, the damage is done here. This is technically a completely lost position after queen g5. It's completely lost. Rook f2, you might think. We can just take that. Or even h5. This this is uh, threatening queen h5 here. It's just technically a lost position, but let's not detract from the beauty of the, the actual analysis they made together. So bishop g1 check, final part of the analysis. Yeah, fascinating stuff, and shows the sensitivity of king safety sometimes. And as I like, in particular, also the aesthetics of d3 shutting down this bishop and actually making this bishop the hero and this bishop asleep, <laughs> like a, a dead piece here, asleep, and this one super dangerous. Oh well. Comments, questions, likes, shares, appreciated. Thanks so much.